Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us which groanings which cannot be uttered, and he that searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit comes to be our helper, and in in the scripture we have the descriptions of the Holy Spirit. He's a he's a helper. He's a comforter, he's a counselor, he's an advocate, he's an intercessor. Now, my, the ministry the Lord has brought us into is an intercessory ministry, but as you begin to intercede in the Holy Spirit and pray in that tongue, you step into a realm that is dynamic, a realm where there is no limitation unless you limit God. God will move by his Spirit in dramatic ways and unusual ways that are quite astounding to the sense mind because we step into the realm of the spirit where God's purpose and God's plan will come forth and there are the different prayers there is a prayer of faith there's a prayer, prayer of consecration a prayer of agreement and in an intercessor he moves into these different prayer and you will intercede for another person an intercessor is one who takes the place of another to intercede in their behalf. And therefore, when you pray in the Spirit, many times you're going to sense what the other person is feeling. And so, many of you, as you move in intercession, you know what it is to pray in the Spirit. How many know that? How it is to it, pray in tongues? You, you know that urgency to pray and to pray until there's victory, there's a note of victory, and singing in the Spirit? How many have experienced that? Amen. Well, I had ministered that way, and after World War II I came home, and I was filled with the Holy Spirit after coming home and being able to settle down and resume our life again, and I began to move an intercessory prayer in, in almost immediately. But it was a number of years later when we had an experience, Fern, would you come and share with us, what, there came a release in our life. And you tell honey. Yes. <clears throat> we were living just like everybody else was living in our church. We were attending regularly, doing all that we could. And um, one day we said to each other, it's too dynamic when we're, what we're reading in the scriptures. We're not living like that. We want to live the book of Acts. We want things to happen. We, want to, we don't want to be ordinary Christians. I don't, they're extraordinary around here, but we thought where well, we were ordinary. We wanted to be extraordinary. And we were trying to figure out, we were praying, seeking the Lord, and we said, well, let's do something active. So we decided that we would begin to tithe for an income much more than what we were experiencing. We needed more money to help more people. And we so we said, let's start right away to tithe. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that we went upstairs in Minnesota. We have attics and basements. You're thinking we went up to a big chest and opened it up and, and we got uh, a cache of diamonds or struck oil in the backyard. No. The gifts of the Holy Spirit began to be manifest. Praise God. Um. There were many experiences. They just they came in like a flood. I didn't understand what was happening because I'd pray in a tongue, but the Lord was introducing me into the area of the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. I did not comprehend what was happening within my life because I would be praying, and as I was praying one evening just before the supper hour, I, began to, I was praying in tongues and I heard myself speak out about cookie. And then I prayed in tongues and I spoke out for candy. And in my mind, I could just sort of visualize a cookie, a piece of, a, one piece of, one cookie and a one candy piece. And I, it, and it interrupted my thinking. I was not able to, and I had to settle down and praise the Lord and I began to pray in a tongue again. And this kept coming and repeating. And finally I got up, went into the kitchen where Fern was preparing the evening meal and I said, Fern, would the Holy Spirit pray about one cookie and one candy? And uh, she says, you'll just have to trust the Holy Spirit, Phil. So I continued to pray. And this continued for two or three weeks. And at this time, our pastor's wife came over one day and said, there's a man coming to our city to minister. He moves in the gifts of the Spirit. We know you're going to enjoy him. And we were happy for that. And Fern says, well, let, let us know when they're in, and we want to entertain them. And our pastor's wife said, well, they don't go out, and they don't like to be entertained when they're in the, in the ministry, out ministering. And so we said, fine, whatever, whichever way it works out, fine. The first night we were in this meeting, we were introduced to Brother Kenneth Hagen. the first time we met him. 
We were in the service, and in the service he called out to me. He says, Phil, stand up, pray out of your spirit. And I'd never had anyone say anything to me like that before. And I thought, well, now what's this? So I stood up and prayed in tongues. And then these words of English started coming that had been coming in my life. And I began to speak about the war that was coming in Vietnam. This was before the war ever came. When I was finished, I sat down, and Brother Hagen gave a prophecy of what would happen, how our nation would be torn apart. He described the whole thing before the war ever came. After that service, he came to us and he said, I'd like to have uh, Fern and uh, Phil, I'd like to have you and Fern come with me in Aretha. We'll go in our car and we'll drive out to a quiet place and have some prayer. As we drove out and got out there and we were going to pray, I said, Brother Hagen, I must ask you something. Will the Holy Spirit pray about a cookie and a candy? And he and Aretha began to just kind of laugh a little and I was, this troubled me. And then finally they said, cookie and candy are the nicknames of our two granddaughters. Then I had understanding. Later, Cookie and Candy's mother and father, Buddy and Pat Harrison, were to come and be the assistant pastors in our church. And there were other things related to this situation this time that I began to understand how great was God's wisdom. Praise God. And so these experiences begin to happen within our life. And the Lord also moved in the realm of the spirit, but he also took me into the realm, out into the natural realm in the business world, and he dealt with me in this area. Because, uh, you know, God is so wise. God knows so much. And he knows each one of us, and he knows just how to take us and deal with us and teach us. So he took me out in the business realm where I was acquainted, and I began to deal with people in a business way, but the Holy Spirit would minister within me. And within my spirit, I would know things in the spirit. Uh, you know, first there's that impression. There's an impression. And God leads by that impression. But then there's praying in the Spirit. And you pray within you, and you'll have a partial knowledge. Or the Lord will give a word of knowledge to so you, give a little more understanding. Then there are times He may show you a vision, and you'll see a clearer picture of what is transpiring and in the area you're working with. But there are the other areas with the wor word of wisdom where He begins to show you things into the future, and you try to comprehend it. And as I prayed these things, and as, that's why I have her with me, because she's with me in all these areas. She knows these prayer times in the nighttime, in the daytime, riding in the car. And many times, her will say, I know what that is. But, you know, we, we find out only God knows. Only God knows. There is there's a learning in these experiences to know when God speaks to you. There may be a time you may go to someone and share something with them. There, but you must be wise to know to not just go with things and run with it because you can do damage unless you God may show you something you're just to pray about. So God gives us wisdom. One time, at one evening, we retired for the night, and it was into the night hours, and I awakened, and I was praying. I interceded at maybe half hour, 45 minutes in tongues. And as I had been praying, suddenly the in, you intercede in the Spirit, you intercede, then you come to a place, it seems like it's a dynamic power of God, you step into a realm where there's authority, you're, you're, you're anointed by the Spirit. And as I came into sort of this area, area of praying, I heard myself call out loudly, I called out loudly, I said, Donald Oman, I said, in the name of Jesus, receive life into your body, in Jesus' name, stand on your feet, and finish the work that God's called you to do. And I mean, it, it came over, and I prayed about all these different areas he was to minister in. And after I was through praying, uh, Fern and I said to each other, I wonder, who is Donald Oman? It was to be six months before I was to see his name on a prayer request sheet at our church one morning. And uh, when I saw the name, I read that it was saying that they were missionaries and they needed prayer. And so I inquired of the lady who had given me the, this uh, sheet of paper. And I said, do you know anything about Donald Oman? And she said his mother-in-law is in the service this morning. So we went down and greeted her after the service. This was service time when I found out about who she was. And we found out that Donald Oman had been a missionary in Lebanon. They had been ministering over there, had a boy's orphanage, and he had been sickly for some time and had bad heart trouble, other complications, been in the hospital, he had just coughed up parts of his lungs, everything. Doctors said there was no way he could live. And in his dying, there was no, he had died. But his wife was believing God. She was believing God. They wouldn't, she wouldn't let them bury him.
God is faithful. Thousands of miles away, that Holy Spirit came down and began to intercede. You see, you intercede for someone else. You take hold with them. And I believe I prayed a prayer of agreement, what she was believing God. And I came into agreement with her, and I began to lift up the God and spoke out in the Spirit, spoke life to this man. I was to meet him later. He lived for another 13 years and finished the work God had called him to do. Then he slipped away to be with the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is moving today in a tremendous way. He's moving. He's just intruding into people's lives. And I believe we're stepping into an area where we're going to see God's Spirit just moving in every individual in the body of Christ, working in unity to bring about what God has for us. Praise God. Praise God. The Holy Spirit uh, not only intercedes, but in my life, he took me through a, a learning process of how he moves. He would demonstrate himself in different ways to us. He would... There were times when he would let Fern know about a situation, and I didn't know about it, and I'd pray in the Spirit. And on such an occasion, my brother and his wife had come in from Wisconsin. He's a farmer in Wisconsin. And he, he and I were out in the garage. You know how you, your brother comes and you visit with him. Just, he just had a time of a little good fellowship together. We went into the house, and Fern had made some coffee, and we had some coffee and cookies. And after a little chat, they went back to Wisconsin. And that night, after... We, while sleeping, I wakened, praying in tongues, as many times I do. That, you see, if you go to bed at night praising the Lord, worshiping the Lord, you're in, in, in a, a spirit of, of worship. And it seems like even if you go to sleep, you're still in that area. And it's just, uh, you can just, well, you just live in the spirit. Well, I, I was praying in tongues, came awake praying, I was waking, I was praying in tongues as I wakened. And I began to pray in the spirit, and I began to pray for Mrs. Miller. I, I, by word of knowledge, I call out the name of a person I pray for, and, I, and then I begin to pray in tongues. And then as I begin to pray in tongues, there are those times when I'll speak out in their behalf, intercede and speak it out in the English language. And as I begin to speak out, I said, Mrs. Miller, I prayed for the aneurysm within her brain, and I commanded the thing to be whole in the name of Jesus, commanded her body to have life and to live, and just prayed about her general situation, things I didn't know about. And after, as I was praying, I could tell Fern was excited. She was b sitting by me and just, I knew she wanted to tell me something. I, I was conscious of that. So after I was through praying, Fern said, Phil, she said, Mrs. Miller is the, uh, just a moment. <clears throat> your brother's, uh, Phyllis, that was Vernon's wife, she had told Fern earlier in the evening that the mortician down in our hometown, his wife had Suddenly, one day in the bathroom, fallen over, she didn't have her balance. They'd taken her to Rice Lake to a hospital, down, then down to Eau Claire. From there, she went down to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, and they examined her, and the doctor said, it's way in the brain, there's nothing we can do. They told her husband, they said, you go home, and when you come back, be prepared to pick up her body. So he left. They called him. They called Anchor to come down and to pick up his wife and so he went down and when he came down there they hadn't told him what had happened and when he walked into the room here was his wife sitting all dressed up ready to go home the doctor says we don't know what happened but she's in per she's perfectly well praise God praise God Fern would you like to come and share here just a moment well I was thinking about this Mrs. Miller, and we were so curious about her that we drove down to Wisconsin, uh, just 100 miles or so from our home in Minnesota, and we did talk with her that following Saturday, and we found her perfectly whole. She didn't know what had happened to her, and of course she knew God had intervened. She was very thankful for the things that God had done for her, and they're good Lutheran people. We checked these things out because we're just as curious as you would be, too. And we always marvel at the deep work of the Holy Spirit. He wants to use you. He'll use anybody that's willing to be used. So stay in the Word, stay in prayer, and just simply look to the Lord for the area of need. The secret to the whole scripture, I've reduced the Bible to about one sentence, the Alverson version, and that is, if you take care of others, God will take care of you. And I know you believe in that. We're so thrilled that we can tell you a little bit about intercessory prayer and the things that God has impressed upon us to do. And that's why we're here. Praise the Lord. I, uh, in the 16th chapter of the Gospel of John, 
the 12th verse, Jesus has been with his disciples for three years. It's, it's just about the time frame that he's ready to go to the cross. And in the 12th verse, Jesus has this, uh, that saying here that is, is quite interesting. Jesus is telling his disciples, he, he says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. And I wondered about that. They'd been with Jesus for three years. They had seen the miracles. They had seen all, they'd been with him close. They knew his love, his companionship. And yet he said there's, he, that there were many things that they couldn't bear yet. Then as we read the next verse here, the 13th is this, Nevertheless, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. And if you read in the Amplified, it says, Whatever the Holy Spirit will hear in the councils of heaven. And as I've interceded in the Holy Spirit, I've, I believe that Jesus is our high priest. He's our intercessor, and he's seated in the heavenlies. We're seated there with him. But as an intercessor, we're seated there, and we're in heaven. He's interceding in your behalf to the Father. And the Holy Spirit doesn't speak himself, but he's up there. And whatever, whatever that intercession is that he speaks, we're seated in the heavenlies. And as an intercessor, we're hearing that. But we live in the earth here, and we have authority. And so that intercession comes. Yes, for I receive of Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yes. Amen. But, yeah, it comes in the Spirit, and we just receive an anointing. We step into a realm of, of God's love. Intercessory prayer is really God's love reaching out to humanity in the situation that they're in. Because many times we don't know how to pray for the, the area prayer that's needed. We don't understand the situation, so we cannot even pray intelligently. Or things we don't even think about how to pray. The Holy Spirit's come to be our helper so that we can step into this realm and pray. Praise God. And so I, I find that as I am in prayer, I, I just I pray with my, the knowledge I have about the situation, and then I will spend time in prayer, praying in tongues, and many times you pray, and you do not know what you're praying about. You just pray, you intercede, you walk in a place of worship, and just worship God, and then there, there are these special times when there is a special revelation, and there are times when God will even, there will be within your spirit, it's like an audible voice within you, and God will just arrest your attention. And when you do, it's, it's like Saul on the road to Tarsus, when, when he was struck down there, he, he recognized God. And if he speaks to you, you won't wonder who's speaking. You just stand in awe. Your spirit is in awe of God. Oh, hallelujah. Back in the year of 1971, Fern and I were to have a privilege. We just didn't realize how wonderful it would be. Brother Hagen had called me and asked me if I would arrange for a place for him to have a seminar. And they came up to be in Minneapolis for 10 days. And at that time, we had the privilege of meeting Vicki Jameson for the first time. She stayed in our home for 10 days, and we had wonderful fellowship, came to know someone who was very sweet, very loving in the Lord. After their return back to Texas, we perhaps would be in contact maybe once a year with a card or a note. And we made one trip to Texas while uh, uh, Vicki was having a, hosting a TV show, and we were there, and I didn't turn us on the program. And then in 1975, God began to deal with me in the spirit. Uh, I began to pray for Vicki, and at first I didn't even wasn't conscious of who I was praying for, because as you pray, these names keep coming in prayer. They just they flood in, and you pray. And I really just I lift the name up. I pray, and with many names, I really don't pay too much attention until if the name starts coming back. It keeps coming back to me, and I begin to pray, and there gets to be a deeper intercession. I believe it's like when a child is born, there is a, a gradual growth, and then there is the travail and the deliverance of the child. And so it is with, within your spirit, it grows, there gets to be a greater intercession that keeps coming to you, and it'll lift, it'll come back again, it'll lift. And then in 1975, there in the, in the summer months, God began to deal with me about, uh, we had a, got a flyer of Vicky's meetings, was, she was going to be in South Bend, Indiana. 
And uh, God impressed me to just arrange to take time off at that time. That's before I took my early retirement. And uh, so I made arrangements to be away from work. And um, as the time drew near, the night before, as we were preparing to go, I went in to pray in the bedroom. And as I was praying, God spoke to me and said, Vicki, isn't it new uh, in South Bend? And, oh. So I walked into the other room. We were packing our suitcases. As for a moment, I wondered, what are we going to do? But the intercession within me was so great. It was so great. I knew in my spirit, at, by this time, it'd be, it, it just reached an apex. And I just had to, I knew in my spirit we had to get to be where Vicky was. This was, I just had to get to be where Vicky was. I, I could not do anything different. It was all such a compelling force. It's almost as if you hear a loved one has been taken to the hospital and you're called to come down for an emergency. They don't tell you what has happened. And this loved one, you don't know if they're dead or alive. I mean, you're very, you're, you, you're going to drop everything to go down there. But it's a much greater concern. It's a, it's within you. It's a groaning, a travailing. It's just like everything else is just moved out of the way and that you must do this thing. You must do it. So Fern, I had Fern call and she found out that Vicky was in New Orleans. And so we, I bought air, uh, airplane tickets and we called and says we'll be coming down tomorrow at 1.30. And we got on the plane, flew down through Dallas, Texas, into New Orleans. As I was flying down over Lake Pontchartrain, in the plane, we're coming in, and suddenly I was in the realm of the spirit, the first time I'd ever had an experience such as this. And I knew what it was to meet the prince of the power of the evil one that ruled over New Orleans. In the realm of the spirit, there was the spiritual conflict. And my experience in this area was, as I was in this area, first, I always begin to speak in tongues. I, this is, uh, to me, I pray in tongues. I can do that better and I can speak English. I mean, I'm, in my tongue, I'm fluent. Mando mm. hoya. Hallelujah. It's, there's, it's liberty. It's freedom. You just can move. Oh, hallelujah. And just your spirit fellowships with the Lord and there's no, no barriers. And so I was in the spirit, and first I speak a little in tongues within me. And on the plane, I'm quiet. People wouldn't know it there. But suddenly in this area, I begin to prophesy to this evil spirit. And I begin to prophesy things that no man would know about the city of New Orleans, about God's work there, what God was doing, what he was going to establish. And as I prophesied many things to this evil one, telling what God was going to do, his work was being defeated, he, would, he was not going to bring things down to their feet. They were going to come forth. They were going to, things were going to come into fruition and be fulfilled according to God's plan. And I spoke with authority to this, this foul thing. And praise God. And then as we landed, we went immediately to the hotel to be with Vicki. And you know, Vicki was in New Orleans. She was having tremendous revival. Tremendous revival. Many souls being saved. Many people being healed. Many people being filled with the Holy Spirit. But we came, we came down there because of the warfare in the spirit that was coming at Vicky, just trying to destroy the ministry, trying to destroy what God was bringing forth. And we went and we came by her and took together with her in hold in the spirit and we began to lift up and intercede against these forces to lift this burden off from her that she might be free and she might minister in the place where God wanted her to minister. You see, in the body of Christ, there are the different ministries. You have your pastors. They are ministering. They are working. They are moving. But there are those in the body of Christ that must support them in prayer, lift them up, undergird them, that they may move in, in God's plan and purpose as God is bringing forth his, his deliverance. I have found that God moves in every area of our life. He's interested in the financial, he is inter interested in the spiritual, he's interested in our body. God led, led me into going into some, buying into some corporations and things after I had moved in his realm of the spirit for a period of probably a year or so from dynamically in the spiritual realm in the church in this area. And then God brought me into the realm of buying into some corporations. and I. I wondered about it. I, uh, I had known many people in the ministry that had become financially involved in things and it's sort of been a drawback in the ministry to, to kind of try to split things up. But God began to deal so just uh, specifically about these things that I knew I must 
step into this realm by faith and believe God. God began to speak to me about buying a bankrupt corporation. And this, in my mind, my natural mind warred against it. It warred against it because I didn't, I wanted everything on the up and up. I wanted there to be profit. I wanted everything to be really going. And this thing was going the other way. But you know, God's going to teach you to, if you're going to walk by the Spirit, you're going to have to walk by what God shows you, not by what you see or hear or other people tell you. You've got to know God's Word. You've got to know it within your spirit. And when someone comes to me and prophesies, I weigh it against what God has shown me. I don't take what someone else tells me. And I'm also, I've come to a place I'm very careful about who I want to lay hands on me. I want the Spirit of God to lead me. Come on, come on. Fern, why don't you come and share a little bit about that? I was thinking about one day we were driving in. We are about 15 miles from our home in St. Paul, Minnesota. Minneapolis St. Paul are twin cities. So they're very close. And we've lived in both cities. We were uh, on our way home, and <clears throat> we had the tape player going in the car. We were worshiping the Lord, and we were singing along with the songs of David Engel. And uh, we were just worshiping the Lord when my husband said, Oh, you remember uh, that? What did you say to me? I said, Phil, Fern, I says, I'm going to be in a hospital. I says, the Holy Spirit's speaking to me about there's going to be intravenous feeding. I said, I refuse to believe that. I don't receive that at all. I said, you're not going to be in any hospital. <laughs> he was in the hospital briefly during the war with a little knee injury, and which the Lord touched that, and we'd never been in the hospital. I said, well, I don't believe it. Well, he said, this Holy Spirit keeps telling me that I will be in a hospital, and I will have intravenous feeding. So we went home, and I think it was next Saturday morning, uh, he awakened very early, I awakened about 7 o'clock, because I heard in the living room sounds of groaning like a woman giving birth, and I, of course, was fully awake and went in the living room, and I found him on the floor writhing in pain. The scripture in 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about the manifestation of the Spirit. And I, I have read that in the seventh verse. The manifestation is given for profit. And I, there have been experiences in my life that I, I, I wondered just what, what is this that's transpiring. And on this morning I was just doubled up and I had such pain across my abdomen. I had such pain. I could pray. I could believe God's word. It only became worse. And there, are, there is a place of travail at times in my life or head where I have thought that I was physically sick. And actually, it's a travail in the spirit. You, you groan and you travail and feel what someone else is going through until you think it's you yourself. So, Fern said, we cannot, you cannot continue on like this. We have to get you to a hospital to find out what is wrong. And we didn't have a family doctor before. We'd had no illness in our family. And uh, so she called her brother, got the name of a doctor, took me down to the hospital, and as they were filling out the forms, you know how they want to know your name, your financial status, your mother, mother's middle name and all this? And Fern says, wait, we'll take care of that later. And they brought me up into the room and brought me into a room with another patient in the room, put me into the bed. They came to take blood samples and all this, tried to determine what was the problem with me because I'd really been carrying on quite a bit. I was just, oh, I felt so terrible. The moment they came into that room with that intravenous bottle and stuck that needle in my arm, Everything left. I was well. And I said to Fern, I said, it's all over. I said, I can go home now. There's, there's, everything is all fine. But they wouldn't listen to me. They kept on doing things. And then I, as I laid there, I thought about it. In the spirit, I prayed about this is going to promote God's kingdom. This is going to promote God's kingdom. And as I laid there, there was a man in the bed next to me, and his sister, I found out later, was the lady that was there with him. She came over to me, and she was crying, and she said, I'd like to have you meet Mr. Crawford. And she says, she says he could slip out into eternity at any moment. And she says, can you help him? Can you help him? And I says, yes. I said, I can help him. I knew then why I was there. Praise God. Uh, in the succeeding days, I was there for five days, they tested me for everything they could test for. They could find nothing wrong. But during this period, my friends came in, we read scripture together, my pastor came in, and as we were, as he was sharing scripture and praying, and he says, Phil, I'm going to pray with you now, 
Mr. Uh, Crawford said, Phil doesn't listen to one that needs prayer. Pastor, he says, I'm the one that needs prayer. We'd been sharing Jesus with him, and he received Christ into his heart. And then at that moment, we prayed for his healing. And it was just a couple days later that his doctors came in. And they said to Mr. Crawford, we, everything, you have responded so well to what's taken place that we're just, we're going to send you home. You have responded marvelously to the medicine we've been giving you. <laughs> well, I knew what had transpired. And a few moments later, just, it wasn't 10 minutes, my doctor came in and he says, Phil, we're going to send you home. We'll have you come back for a checkup in about a month again. We'll do some more tests. And so I said, fine. And then Mr. Crawford, he said, Phil, he said, my wife's, a, his wife has been in another hospital with a back problem, and she'd been discharged just a little earlier in the day. And it called him and it was going to pick Mr. Crawford up. And he said, don't, don't have Fern come and get you. He says, we'll drive you home. I called Fern and she put our coffee pot on like we do in Minnesota and we drove home and the Crawfords came in and we had fellowship with them and Fern led Mrs. Crawford to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And so in intercessory prayer it's a ministry where God is moving through you for the benefit of others. The, the Holy Spirit is interceding and you, you intercede for the nation you intercede in, in situation the Spirit will move from one place to another very quickly and you uh, uh, it's much quicker than you can under, with your own mind you'd pray something you'd pray the, a prayer pray it all the way through but you can pray in the Holy Spirit and it'll move from one thing to another to another and it, it just I guess there's so many things that need prayer and probably such few intercessors that God when, when you take time to intercede he, he just moves through you in a in a very dy dynamic way. During the time that we were going to New Orleans and uh, I had this experience there, uh, God began to show me about uh, that what would transpire in January of that year. And I knew we would be going to be in another meeting with Vicky. I knew that before I even went to New Orleans. I don't know, Vicky, if you knew that or not. Uh, you don't tell me right now. No. <laughs> uh, but the Lord showed me that, and I came home. I worked for the government for 34 years, a supervisory position. But God began to deal with me to retire. And I said, well, Lord, you're going to have to show me when. Well, the Lord instructed me to take the month of January off following the, it was in October we were in New Orleans. And so I took the month of January off and to pray and fast. And I knew there was a three-day meeting in Salem, Ohio. And... Uh, we were going down there, and I remember leaving Minneapolis early in the morning. It was snowing, a snowstorm, and I got in the car, and I drove. And as we would drive, I'd drive out of the snowstorm, and I'd stop for gas. The snowstorm would overtake us, ice and sleet. And I'd get in the car, and I'd drive fast, and I'd go again. And I drove that way all the way to Salem, Ohio. Well, I got to Youngstown, got into a motel late at night, and I woke up in the morning. There was about six inches of new snow outside. How much? Okay. Well, <laughs> We were just a few miles from Salem. We got there, met the pastor, met Vicki and Sharon, and we went into meetings there. And you know those meetings, instead of being three days, they lasted two weeks. God's glory came down in a wonderful way. Oh, praise the Lord. We saw miracles. We saw wonderful things. And God began to speak to me about I would have to leave my work. I would have to retire. And after coming home from that trip back to Minneapolis on the 1st of February, I gave a month's notice that I would retire. And God spoke to me and said, I'm going to bless you more than the government can bless you. Oh, hallelujah. And you know, when the Lord pours you out a blessing, Fern told you about we're going to give money to the Lord and that God might bless us. But the blessing that God gives out, he pours you out a blessing much greater then you can contain and you have to step into the realm of God's spirit into God's kingdom to really be blessed in the natural world you can be blessed with material things but that's not the real blessing the blessing is knowing Jesus the blessing is knowing the body of Christ and flowing in the spirit the blessing is seeing souls come to know Jesus the blessing is seeing bodies healed the blessing is seeing people lift into the God's kingdom moving in love in a dynamic realm to those that are dying, lifting men to God's kingdom, to be with him in eternity. And the rejoicing there will be when we will see them worshiping God, praising God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to rejoice through eternity. 
Oh, I want to encourage you to pray. It's dynamic to walk with God in fellowship and let him use you as he chooses because he's wonderful. He's the God of our salvation. He's the author of it. And he's going to bring us into an abundant place in him as you open your heart to the Lord. God bless you. For more information about this ministry or a complete catalog of teaching tapes and other materials available, please write Mac Hammond Ministries, Post Office Box 29469, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55429. Thank you.